Hello guys, a Twinkle Beanies here, and welcome back to more Friday's at Freddy's Discoveries. Um, Friday's at Freddy's 3 fan game episode Discoveries. Um, right, I want to talk about something that isn't probably associated with this, well, is associated with the game and isn't. Right, the reason we're going to have this little small little episode is because of that one scene where I showed you that newspaper. We know... In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, there's an old newspaper article that came from the previous um, previous locations that explains, like from a long time ago, that there was the murder of some children and the suspect had, you know, been arrested. He was caught the next day. But in this version, in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 fan game, it says that the murder has yet to be called. That got me thinking. So then I went back over what we know about the mini game. So this also confirms my suspicions now more than 100%. Say, because there's a few thick people that are saying this as well, that the mini games you see in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, they are memories. The nanomatrons are trying to show you something. The marionette is, in a sense. They're telling the story of what happened at the restaurant. The restaurant before, the diner, the restaurant place. That is where their children were murdered. And the ones present there was Foxy behind the curtain, Bonnie, Chica, Freddy. Golden Freddy as well, because his face does come through the thing. But the marionette was there. There was no sign of kiddo. Sorry, Bibi. So Bibi and the toys are not part of this. But why is Bibi's eyes go pink? No, I'm not going on that. If that's being said, so the phone guy has been in the fat has been in the company for ages. The company's got these strange rules. There's one rule saying like, uh, upon finding a dead person or body or something, uh, the police will be notified after a couple of days after everything's been cleaned and stuff. But that will get rid of evidence. But then that doesn't make sense in this game. If the murderer, if, because we were told that this follows Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and one's plot. But we always assume the phone guy was the murderer, but if the murderer was you know, arrested in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, previously, how was the phone guy back on the phone? He couldn't have known. Unless they didn't have enough to hold him and they let him go and that's how he later gets killed by the Namatron. Or, because how exactly would you go about killing a bunch of children and nobody in the company knows? They do a background chat, they've been sure. And they dressed up as one of the mascots, one of the Namatrons. Again, I can understand it, but how young were these children? Why did nobody see anything? But now I'm even more confused about the phone guy. Because we know the phone guy died in the phone call in Friday Nights at Freddy's. Friday Nights at Freddy's 2, he talks and says that he's planning on taking over the night shift from Jeremy. Jeremy leaves. But he does say that they are having trouble tracking down anyone from the, di from the, the restaurant, the previous place. It's very hard to track people down. Strange, odd, I wonder why you can't track them down. It should be easy to find people associated with the place. And he also says that nobody's lived in and out of the building. That already sounded alarm bells off with me from Five Nights at Freddy's 2. That was weird. Why not in and out? Why was he trying to keep them in? So then Jeremy obviously leaves and the Fr Fritz Smith takes over the job. He gets fired for tampering with the animatrons and causing a strange odour to come from them and that's why the place gets closed down. The guys are then brought back and they're redesigned, reused. Tamper with them. Which ones? Because this takes place in Fire Nights at Freddy's 2 and Foxy and all them were already like all... Whoever put them back together had to have seen the bodies or put the bodies in then. That has to be it. Whoever did do it, put them in when they were fixing them up because they then brought them back brand new again. But they were still acting weird. I mean, you notice there's wiring still all over Freddy's place. 
but keeping that in mind then, and from the phone call we had from Friday Nights at Freddy's, the phone guy's dead. And we know from the opening of Friday Nights at Freddy's State the Fan Game, possibly he died, because he clearly was screaming. But then, when was this pre-recording made? How did he know Mike? He said Mike on the phone. How would he know? He couldn't know. I'm confused. Hmm. Oh, we're gonna head off now to night two. I just thought I'd throw that out there. There's still questions I don't understand. And the fact that the guy did say, you'd be golden, that's still creepy as hell. Conveniently, he says golden. I don't know if that's relevant or not. Whether it is or not, it's yet to be seen. But at least now, we can more or less con sort of kind of confirm the marionette was from the previous location. And if it's a restaurant, back th in those times, they did create diners with, um, like, theatre in them. But again... Who's putting the papers up during Friday Mr. Freddy's? Why can't we see the kitchen? Damn it! We like have so much already and yet we're still so far from working out everything. Cause there's bound to be more to it than that. Cause I mean, this is a fan game. It's really hard to work out everything as it is. Bonnie creeping the camera was just weird. But why kill them? Were they related to each other? I don't know. We'll find out in time, hopefully.